Hello, everybody, uh, online, wherever uh, you're at. We are here. I am here uh, in the nation's capital on unceded Algonquin Anishinaabeg territory. Uh, my name is Quandika Fente. I've said uh, I am the executive director of CKCU FM, uh, and a radio station that's focused on uh, on non-mainstream voices and communities, and that's been since 1975. And I'm also the uh, diversity and inclusion observer on the board of Factor. And that's part of what brings me here today. Um, you know, uh, speaking about the way that festivals in the future uh, will be approaching diversity and inclusion and will be approaching in particular uh, the experiences of Black artists in both the Anglophone et POC uh, dans les scènes francophones. And so in this discussion, we're bringing together a range of different uh, perspectives on festival on, oh, I guess, and, and I should say, you know, I'll preface this actually before I introduce everybody by saying that, you know, we, all of us who are on this panel are not decision makers in the festival world. We are artists. Uh, some of us are artists. Some of us are event producers. Uh, we all have different roles, but not, we're not the decision makers when it comes to festivals. And so a part of our discussion today will be really looking at, you know, why it is that you know, some of those or where those decision makers are in the festival industry who, uh, who are in the position to be able to change the way that festivals are being booked right now. If we feel like uh, they are, um, if we feel like, you know, we're not seeing enough representation. And, you know, if those people don't exist, why is that? And, you know, what do we think uh, some solutions can be to getting people into those positions? And so, you know, I say that just as a, you know, just to give the conversation some scope because, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, when we're talking, when we're talking about festivals, uh, we're talking about it from the perspectives that we have. I just want to clarify that. Uh, and also, I just want to say that today we are going to talk in English and also in French. We have the artists of the scene francophone. Uh, et puis, alors, uh, c'est important là de, uh, de, uh, de parler de cette scène uh, dans la langue francophone, dans la franco dans, dans la langue française. Alors, nous allons faire ça uh, aujourd'hui aussi. Alors, si tu as besoin de, uh, uh, je pense que tu peux, je pense qu'il y a comme un, un translate dans YouTube ou, ou, ou quelque chose comme ça que tu peux, que tu peux uh, utiliser. Uh, si tu veux, uh, si tu veux uh, uh, un peu d'aide avec ça. Mais nous allons aller uh, d'anglais à français and then from English back to French. So, on that note, uh, let's get some introductions rolling. Um, and, you know, I'm going to give a brief introduction and then maybe I'll ask the person to say a little bit about themselves. And so, we're going to start with Cécile Dukingue. Uh, je pense que est-ce que, est que j'ai prononcé um, ça correctement? Oui et non. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> corrige-moi. Uh, um, so, d'abord, bonjour tout le monde. Hey, everybody. Um, I guess it depends on where you're from. Um, the, the name is originally from Cameroon. Um, so, it, it would be Doaki, but um, it's been okay. anglicized and francophone and france uh, gallicized by my father. So, the, right. the actual way to pronounce it. Or he, the way he pronounced it was Dokingé. So you can say Cécile Dokingé or Cécile Dokingé if you're Anglophone, but neither one is actually correct. <laughs> so that's that's okay. why I answered the question <laughs> that way. <laughs> okay. But um, but yeah, nice to, to, okay, to well, see you, all of you. Okay, I just wanted to say briefly. I just wanted to say briefly about you that you know an exceptional stage presence, a guitarist, singer, songwriter. Uh, and that your and that your star really blends blues, Afro roots, and soul. Uh, you were born and raised in New York City, but as you mentioned, first generation from Cameroon, and lived uh, all around. But now have uh, adopted Montreal as your home. That's right. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I just wanted uh, you know maybe you could uh, also following that introduce a little bit of, about yourself and talk about your experience playing festivals, uh, just to introduce. Uh, or your, 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 your experience with the festival industry, just to introduce the conversation. Okay. Well, um, 
up until the pandemic, really, um, I, I was performing a lot of live shows. Uh, my trio, um, I guess, since since 2014, 2013, 2014, did hundreds of, of shows, averaging about 100, 150 shows a year. Um, a mm. lot of festivals. So we did all the, the, the folk fests in Canada, all, all the mm. big ones anyways, the, the major um, jazz fests, um, did some in, in Europe as well. And, um, you know, as much uh, mostly f- folk jazz blues scene. Um, a lot of times mm-hmm. on the blue scene, we were the few, you know, if, if sometimes felt like tokenism, to be honest, um, as, a, mm-hmm. as a black woman instrumentalist, there aren't a ton of us out there. Um, mm-hmm. There aren't a ton of black artists being presented um, on those scenes, or at least on, on the blue scene up here, it's, it's predominantly white, let's be honest. Um, mm-hmm. It yeah. kind of reflects the country as well, to a certain extent, right? <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Like, like I it's, mean, this it's is one of compared the to the numbers, right? So, um, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, it's a, a lot of times um, you feel like your box being checked, whether it's on the, the, right. the Anglophone or the Francophone side. Um, that being said, there okay. are also a lot of festivals that are, that are trying to make a difference and present a nice scope of artists and, and actually discover, help you get discovered, which has been also predominantly the case for my project that was put on the mm-hmm. scene by by directors who actually wanted to make sure that I was getting heard and, and appreciated and get at the notori- notoriety they felt that, that I deserved. So I'm um, mitigated I mean, we'll as far as this circle. question goes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's something we'll definitely circle back to in terms of what the difference between sort of something that's really a, a festival that's focused on discovery versus something that's really just sort of trying to present sort of back to audiences, sort of what they feel like the market, what's already in the market, you know what I'm saying? And, and the different opportunities that present themselves with those kinds of spaces. So thank you. Uh, City Fidelia, uh, born an Ottawa native. Uh, City is definitely a soulful street poet, rapper, and songwriter. Uh, he's performed all over North America, Asia, and Europe, uh, opening uh, and collaborating uh, with, with artists like Malik Youssef, Timbaland, Showtech, uh, all over the place. And City now is also uh, my comrade in radio, working at CHUO as the uh, program director, I believe. Uh, and yeah, I mean, here uh, uh, live f- uh, from, where are you at, City? Uh, I'm actually at CHUO right now. <laughs> okay, live from the lab in CHUO, City Fidelia. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe you could uh, introduce yourself and let people know a little bit about your experience with festivals and the festival industry and and in terms of you know getting booked at festivals uh and uh, or and and were you involved with cranium festival in the booking at all i'm not i'm not sure um yes uh this this year i just did a panel but the year before that i was headlining okay so yeah, yeah i mean talk a little bit about about your festival experiences and sort of and maybe related a little bit to what we heard from cecile uh, if the kind of festivals that you're performing at, are you seeing a lot of artists of color? Uh, are you seeing that representation uh, at the at the kinds of things that you're engaged with, or or no? Um, so I would say, like in my international um, experiences, I was able to see uh, more uh, individuals that um, pretty much look like me that were black and. Um, in all aspects of the festivals, like um, whether it was like the performers, the staff, uh, the, the people on the board or whatnot. Um, in Ottawa, I would say like Cranium for me was uh, one of the first like festivals that really like showed, especially like hip hop and R&B artists, like their value. And mm-hmm. you could tell like they took the time to to see like who's who and who's like doing what, where my experience was like, let's say like Blues Fest or whatnot, I think it does feel, for me, it does feel when it comes to hip hop and R&B, there's a lot of like, just, yeah, checking off the bo- boxes, you know? Uh, Box it's just checking, like, yeah. it's, it's just like, yeah, like, okay, let's make sure we have this much hip hop and that's it. It's not really, uh, okay, like having, 
I don't know exactly who's on the board, but um, I think it doesn't, when I'm looking at the list, like especially in recent years, is it's a lot of like, I feel like it's missing that person that's in tune with what's going on in the, in the city. And um, mm-hmm. I, I think, and another thing is with all other genres, and um, I feel like there's been a lot of like outreach Whereas mm. for hip hop, it was a, it's a lot of like yeah, we, we have to go through the application process, which I think that should still be there. But mm. I do also think that if there's an artist that's bubbling in that in that genre city, has the biggest one of the biggest festivals in um, in North America, you should be able to like point that person out and mm-hmm. reach out to them to be on on the festival. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll build on that as well in terms of like the sort of, yeah, the responsibility of the festivals to be connected yes. to the music scenes and to be reaching out to the music scenes uh, versus sort of uh, seeking applications or or being in that being in that position where you know you're really they're 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 uh, they're almost like passively seeking talent as opposed to actively actively seeking it out. Yeah. So you know, appreciate that perspective, and like, yeah, we'll 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 circle back to that. Um, you know, next we want to introduce uh, Ian Andre Espinette, uh, business professional with over two and a half decades of combined expertise in various aspects of the industry, from graphic design to uh, to sort of. Uh, I know that you were involved, uh, you know, pre-pandemic in planning a festival or. Uh, or, or you were in the beginning process of that, and so um, I know you. And, and, and in addition, you know, as a result of not as a result of, but during the pandemic, one of the uh, there was a really great conversation series called Breaking Down Racial Barriers, which is a ten-week panel discussion about anti-black racism. Uh, and you know, it, it, it you know it, it sparked some really uh, essential conversations at a really important time. Uh, and so. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to introduce Ian. You know, in addition, in addition to all of that, uh, he's he's an advisory member on the Ontario Creates Industry Advisory Committee, and uh, an advocacy committee for Advance, which is an organization that's focused on Black leadership in the music industry. So, Ian, you know, I'm interested. Uh, same question about you know your experience. You've had a, a a wide range of experiences in different sort of facets of the industry, and so uh, as it relates to festivals you know, and, and your engagement with the festival side of things, uh, what have you seen? Yeah, so, I mean, today I'm going to speak from the uh, the perspective of, you know, I've been in the industry for about 25 years, both as a, a graphic designer and then as an event producer. Um, last 20 years, I've been producing larger events and moving towards ultimately a festival uh, pre-pandemic. Um, you know, I'll, I'll speak from uh, the perspective of the marketing and, uh, and the inclusion of... Uh, you know, both um, Black people, I'm going to speak on anti-Black racism and Black people specifically as opposed to a BIPOC conversation, uh, but, um, you know, our inclusion in the, the festival ecosystem as event producers, decision makers, and across the ecosystem. Okay, well, so thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward to circling back to some of that, as you said, sort of getting specific uh, about Black and anti-Black racism and and yeah, you know, ways to really think about, uh, um, about I guess, uh, not just talking about, but measuring performance as it relates to how we, how we move forward with all of these things. Um, and last, but definitely not least, uh, mon frère Yao. Um, he is, uh, he is a flam poet, uh, and also, you know, musician, uh, 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 creator, um, you know, live performer, um, he's performed all over the world, um, and, uh, you know, nous, nous sommes, uh, vraiment, uh, uh, vraiment, vraiment, uh, comment se dit ça, um, uh, uh, um, uh, Ben, je veux juste dire c'est génial de, de, de lui avoir dans notre scène locale uh, et, 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 et nous, avons, nous, nous nous sommes tous chers de, de, de Yao uh, et puis alors uh, je veux juste lui en, introduire à vous Yao um, et si, je sais que tu, tu as uh, 
bien sûr, à, à jouer à, à toutes sortes de festivals dans l'Amérique du Nord et puis comme tout partout dans l'Afrique, je sais. Et alors, je veux juste savoir de toute votre expérience, euh, comment est-ce que tu vois euh, la scène festival euh, pour les gens euh, numéro un euh, noir euh, ou, ou les personnes de la du, du, euh, d'une communauté, communauté de, de, des couleurs ou, ou, ou de euh, les francophones? S'il y a une différence entre la scène francophone et puis euh, la scène anglophone. Euh, bonjour tout le monde, merci beaucoup Kwende, euh, très heureux d'être ici avec vous et comme Kwende l'a mentionné, we're going to be going back and forth in French and English as well. Je sais, I know there's a lot of Anglophones here, but if there are Francophones as well, feel free to send a message in the chat if you have specific things that you'd like for me to answer. Uh, it was important for us to re- remember that we're, we are in a bilingual country, so <laughs> we have to play more parts. Uh, but I am definitely going to be introduced because I, I want to say a lot. Of, I think I feel like there's a lot of things that I want to say and I want people to really grasp the extent of what I'm trying to say. So um, I might very well speak a lot in English as well for, for the majority here. Um, it, it's um, in my experience, it's it's been very interesting. And I think there's a significant difference between the Anglophone and the Francophone scene. I think there are layers. Uh, there's a lot of layers. And, and, and I love what I've heard so far from from Ian, from CC, from City, because I think it's going to give perspective to this conversation as well. And the layers I'm talking about is there's the Francophone scene, but there's also the Francophone within the Anglophone scene. And that's one of the things that I think is important to mention. And um, I've been blessed. Uh, my last album came in 24th of the top 200 new releases in Canada in French pop. And like you mentioned, I've been able to, and I, I'm an audible guy here, since 1999, all right. <laughs> and, and, and I've had the, the blessing to perform, you know, from in Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Madagascar, Cabo Verde, France. And there's literally three provinces in Canada where I haven't played, which is Yukon, Nunavut, and Newfoundland. Mm-hmm. So if you know people there that, you know, want to book a French mm-hmm. black artist, you know, give me a shout. You know, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to say that I, I toured Canada extensively from coast to coast with no exceptions, you know, right? <laughs> Um, in my experience, it's very different already on the French side because I love there's a lot of conversation between a festival that's made to make to discover artists and mainstream festivals. And one of the big things that I want to start with is the fact that a lot of times francophones are not even considered in major anglophone festivals. And my question is, why is that? I think there's a reality. Est-ce que tu dis dans les, dans les festivals mainstream ou, ou dans les festivals du tout? Both. OK. Both, les deux, dans les deux. Et, et, et pourquoi je dis ça? C'est parce que we've had conversation with, with, with festival programmers who are still reluctant to book a francophone artist, even though this francophone artist can fill up a 5,000-seater. But the reality of it is francophone is already like... I never really understood why this approach we're in a bilingual country and we've all listened to music... Um, that we don't necessarily understand the language or the lyrics, but we still love it. Music is universal, right? And the reason why I'm talking about it is because while in Canada, as a Francophone artist, I'm still fighting to, 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 to play some major Anglophone festival. You know, even with everything that I did, I, it's always a, a little bitter for me, and I have to admit it, to say, you know, I'm an Ottawa guy. I've performed in so many different stages, but I've never played Blues Fest. You know what I mean? So <laughs> the, where I'm going to be like... Mm. Where, where, what am I missing? Where's the link that I'm missing? But I can go to Atlantic Music Expo in Cabo Verde, find myself on stage on a Friday night in front of 3,000 people with an Anglophone artist from the States, ill-spoken, uh, an artist from, the, from Cabo Verde who sings in, who raps in Portuguese, bachart, and I rap in French, and all three mm. of us were in front of 3,000 people and making everybody jump in and making everybody vibe, right? So why is it that international festivals have a little, little bit more of that reality of opening the, the, the genres and talking about genres. One of the big things I find is that yeah. music wise, you know, a lot of times you go online, you, you go on any platform, you see soul, funk, rap, and then you see French music. Like French music is not a genre. <laughs> like there's, there's rock right. in French, there's rap right. in French, you know, and why are we always right. putting everything in a small box? So with that really reality as a Francophone artist, and then as a Black artist on top of it, you know, I often feel like Cécile Duquengue, where it's like a, it's a box checker, right? Where it's, uh, you, you feel like a token person. Yeah. Well, 
So we booked the black. I'm interested artists. in that. I'm interested in that perspective, and I'll give you just some, you know, a little bit from my experience. Also, you know, I've been also an event promoter, uh, um, you know, producer for over 15 years now. And before the pandemic, you know, we were in the process of producing a range of different live shows. And, you know, one of our most successful shows was, a, you know, was a rock musician from Niger. And, you know, it brought a whole range of people out. And, you know, it was amazing music, but it was like, you know, it was sung in, uh, in an African language. It was sung in French. It was rock music, but it was black music. But, you know, it, and it was a hit. And the idea that, you know, we took a risk on that um was uh you know that was our imperative as a group we said we wanted to do this and we 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 could see that it would be successful because as city talked about you know we're in tune with what's going on as far as you know our community and the people who are listening to music in the street but you know do, are, do we feel that there isn't um a connection between the festival programmers and that level of 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 sort of uh, connection uh, to to music as it's consumed. Do, you, okay. do we feel like they're just looking at Spotify charts, like you know what I'm saying, and and trying to make decisions, or or what do you think? I'm gonna I'm gonna pass to Cecile and see if we can get an opinion from her, and then I want and then I want to jump back to Ian oh. about it, and then and then yeah, we'll I think I think one one element is, for example, like. Right now, we're we're having this discussion as part of a of a conference, right? And mm -hmm. a lot of shopping for festivals gets done at these conferences, at showcases, at whatever else. And if you're not part of the artists who are aware of these showcases, a lot of times you will not be even considered as a possibility because folks won't know who you are. You know, and it's a, like so many of, of my friends, um, black friends, black artist friends were unaware a, of the conferences or unaware of the grants or even in terms of the showcases, like you have to be able to, to afford them, right? Like, like right now yeah. we've got the, the sliding scale happening because of pandemic and whatever else, but the rest of the time, you know, you want to go to the to focus Alliance, you want to go to FMO, you want to go to Capital Co, you want to go to Womex or whatever else, it's going to cost you thousands of dollars. So if you're not getting the grants, yeah. you're not getting the access. So a lot of times you are not getting considered. So there's a financial aspect of that as well, right? So then it's, it's the game is kind of... Financial barrier exactly. to accessibility. So then you're already skewing the game because by lack of, of information and by yeah. lack of... Because the people who are making the decisions aren't even seeing you. So, yeah. so that, that to me is, is one big hurdle that needs to get um, chopped. Like it's not even a matter of, of jumping over it. It's a matter of just getting rid of that hurdle, you know, and figuring out how it is that we can have a direct line, you know, because... And, you know, I, 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 I think that's a great point. And it's something that, you know, Ian and I, we, were, we had a, a brief discussion yesterday and I... And in some ways, we touched on this as far as, you know, our different experiences in the music industry. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've been going to a lot of these conferences, mainly for work purposes, because of prior to this, prior to working at, the, at uh, the radio station, I worked for the city of Ottawa and developing the music industry. And I, you know, got familiar with a whole bunch of these people who are, who are at these conferences all of the time because it's their job and, and they work in the music industry, but I would not, you know, the, the fact is, you know, we, as you said, they're there to shop. And, you know, on the artist side, I wasn't seeing, as you, as you said, I wasn't seeing a great diversity in the room of people who could be in the room meeting those people as well. And so Ian, I'm interested in your perspective on, 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 on sort of what Cecile has just talked about as far as that, that financial access to the room where the decision makers are. Um, so, I mean, I think, um, you know, to, to dovetail off of, you know, your question about uh, are they looking at the Spotify lists or are they actually in the community? I think um, that's a critical starting point because, you know, like I'll just put it on record um, all the time. I always use this phrase like plain talk, bad manners. We are the culture, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, nothing 
moves without us. And so if you don't, you're not connected to the people who are created and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and in, immersed in the, in the culture, then you, you are not presenting anything um, authentic. And that's why a lot of these festivals are dying from jazz to wherever. And you see them pulling from other areas. Uh, to Cecile's, um, Cecile's point, um, you know, we were talking yesterday about the five black people you know thing. Um, you know, which is, which is a, a thing that is permeating the industry. It's like, you know, I know these five black people. I know these five black artists. Um, I know these five people when all of this stuff happened, these are the people we're going to go and reach out to and add to a board. Uh, we're going to give a hundred thousand diversity and equity um, position to, and we know that you like black spelt in capital B and racism solved. And so um, you know, there's a problem here where there is a problem with outreach um, that, you know, Cecile was saying, like, people don't know where to access the grants. It's not that we don't know how to use Google, right? There's an outreach problem. If you don't know where to advertise to find us, then you need to find somebody who does or you shouldn't have a job. It's that simple. There's a country here and we need to uh, more adequately reflect the diversity in the country because factually and otherwise, um, you know, the musics that we are playing in all of these genres are black musics. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and yeah, I know you wanted to come, I know you wanted to, to, to follow up on that. So please. I want to jump on that because there's two things also that there are mentioned that I think is important in this, in the idea of the ecosystem. What is the role of the festival festival programmer. What is your actual role? Mm -hmm. And on another note, the whole idea of risk taking. I think you mentioned risk taking, you know, felt like a risk, mm -hmm. but I think there's, there's, there's that notion of risk taking also that need to be evaluated within a festival, you know, because a lot of these festivals also are getting a, a, a whole lot of grant money from government to be able to organize and to be able to promote this culture. But a lot of them, not I, I believe, and that's my humble opinion, not necessarily understanding what the role and what to what level they can take risks are gonna be looking for the mainstream yeah. artist who's gonna sell tickets and the how do we evaluate the success of a festival? They're gonna tell you they sold so many tickets. That's what the, yeah, that, no, that's a lot of times that's what you hear from festivals. We sold, we had so many people come to our festival this year, but what does that mean for the culture, right? You're making a good and it's and and yeah about, about the idea that um that these festivals exist as part of a broader culture and that they have a role in in terms of the development of the culture that they are you know they, they should be contributing as much value as they extract from from these cults from from the culture and you know i think in some respect sort of what you're what you're talking about um as far as as far as risk taking and how how these organizations evaluate their bottom line, you know, is it is it just about tickets sold, you know, feet through the gate, or is it about some broader impact that you've had on the community that you are engaged with, you know, either in terms of the music that you're that you're presenting or the uh, or the local community that you're in, like, you know, how do you how do you uh, how do you bring that kind of metric? into evaluating the success of an organization from the perspective of a government organization like factor or uh or otherwise ian i saw your i saw your hand go up sorry uh, city hasn't spoken so i didn't want to uh, sorry and let me just let me just qualify that sorry i meant a uh, a uh, a uh, private nonprofit organization that's quasi affiliated with the government like factor i just want to <laughs> put a pin in that anyway go ahead <laughs> oh, no worries uh from my no, experience, I, 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 I think it was. Sorry, oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, city, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was just gonna say, uh, from my experience, like, there's been two situations where I, I really felt like, you know, the, just like the the council uh, individuals, like in Canada and like the city, kind of like, I mean, a place where I felt disappointed. Like one one of the situations was um, I got booked for Rolling Loud in in Hong Kong. And like that was, that's pretty much the biggest hip hop festival in in the world. And for like uh, an individual for from a small town to be booked on that, it's like 
it's a big thing. So when I applied to to get some funding to have like one of my managers come with me, it's like we 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 got denied. And for me, it's like how like how do you not support that? And for me, it's like f like at the at a stage like that, you're denying me. It it it, it puts me in a place where I feel like discouraged to to even apply because I'm like if you say no to this like what else what are you going to say yes to you know and uh, mm. another another situation was uh, I was playing Blues Fest I was scheduled to play um, at 8 p.m. right before Machine Gun Kelly and then um, they decided I guess they they got a new booking and they 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 bumped me up but they didn't. They didn't send me no email, no nothing to let me know. <laughs> I got bumped up. It was just a phone call I got. I was like, my sister was like, oh, you're not playing at eight anymore. I was like, what? Like, and this was like maybe like two, three days before the, the actual, my actual show. And for me, it's like, yeah, go, go ahead. Mean, no, no, I was going to say, I don't know. I was just saying that like, yeah, I mean, those kinds of, uh, yeah, as a performer, I've been, I've been there and those types of interactions suck. I don't know, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how the, you know, how the contract was structured or whatever, as far as what they're able to do versus, you know, what's actually courteous. But mm. it's like, that's, you know, that stuff is challenging for sure as an artist. And particularly, again, as somebody who's local to a place um, and, 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 is rep- and is repping the place, and you know you wanna you would think you'd hope that uh, uh, you would hope that you would get that opportunity both you know in both cases in terms of what you're talking about both in terms of this opportunity uh, uh, overseas in Asia and then at home and so like the question is sort of like what is interrupting you know what is interrupting this or like you know where is the disconnect and 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 why is the disconnect. You know, I know Ian. You you've been asking some of these questions in uh, as it relates to uh, some of your uh, some of the um, uh, the follow up to your uh, conversation series. Yeah, I'm just yeah, wondering so if you have any. Insight. I want to I want to circle back to your question about success and, and assessing financial um, success. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is mm. that over the last little while, there's been, and, and I want to step back from this afterwards, but there's been a lot of, um, you know, diversification in the, in the festival world. And, you know, like, you know, white kids who skateboard listen to Lupe Fiasco and, and black kids stage dive. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? Black people have always been in every genre, uh, because as I've said, like all of these genres are black music genres to start with. But, um, you know, if, if we're really talking about a solution and we're talking about um, festivals wanting to, um, to really do the things that they're saying that they're doing, why we're on these panels, et cetera, um, let me speak in a language that you understand because I'm an event producer myself. Um, if you incentivize, like for black artists, and I'm not a black artist, there are artists on this, on this panel who can speak on this, there is no um, value exchange. Um, Like, you know, if we look at like music uh, uh, award shows and your side stage, you're getting side stage publicity. If you are a a white artist in these spaces, when you are finished uh, getting whichever award or whichever festival you're on, you're getting booked on all of these other festivals. There's a return in financial exchange. Now, from the, you know, from the Black artist perspective, in my understanding, right, there's no value exchange. Like when you're finished with it, you're going to tour uh, college, you know what I mean? Colleges, etc. But you are going to have to do more um, and understand that booking Black artists also brings you new audiences and brings you financial gain, right? And mm-hmm. that you are going to have to do things and supposedly, and there, there are ways to incentivize these, all of the organizations, the grant organizations are putting forth things as Yao has, has pointed at that um, are in place for, um, to, 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 to lessen the space between uh, the haves and the have nots. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just like when, when you have an artist go out on tour and bring another artist with them as an undercard, by creating exposure for these artists, you are creating exposure and helping yourself in the long run. Sorry, yeah. And Yeah, and, no, I told, I, I, no, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, please. 
I, I love what you're saying because in the in and, and what City just mentioned because it's in the francophone community it's been it's been a big conversation it's been a big conversation for two major reasons um, and francophone festivals like the Festival Francontarien for example started doing something that I thought was fairly interesting so what they would do is that understanding that their role is also to make their public discover new artists that's what festivals used to be that's what then used to be people used to go there to discover artists so there was a whole lot more incentive to be risk taker right you wanted to be avant-garde yeah i'm booking this new artist that does people don't know yet i think we went far away from that perspective now i think people now are trying to book people that everybody already knows right so in the francophone community what they started to do is they started to do the concept shows so for example there's a main act there's a major francophone artist who's coming to perform and the show right before is actually set up so that it's a concept show that will showcase multiple artists from different genres, from different backgrounds. And it's been something that's been so far successful. And one of the reasons why they started doing that, for example, in the Francophone community, a lot of Francophone are Blacks. But for example, the Festival franco ontarien for a long time was having a hard time bringing these people over because they wouldn't identify themselves as Franco-Ontarians, even though they're Francophones and they live in Ontario. So they tried something mm -hmm. that for like a good two years, which ended up taken away because they realized it wasn't working. They, they started putting, you know, the side stage, the, the, the ghettoizing of the mm -hmm. thing where it's like, oh, we're going to do this thing specific. We're going to call it La, La Fête Africaine, the African party. And, you know, Black people are going to show up to that. And it's like, no, it still didn't work. It didn't work mm -hmm. because we often <laughs> festivals think about that like that, right? It's not either major or big enough. So they put it on a side stage. A black artist is performing on a side stage or he's performing at five o'clock. But what's the reality of the festival and what's your public? Who's coming? You know, most people, most black people from the black community, we have to talk about the hurdle, not only for the artists to be there, but also for the public to be there. The black community is not going to pay three hundred dollars mm -hmm. to a festival ticket to show up. That's the reality as well. So we have to talk mm -hmm. about that reality. And a lot of times they're not going to show up to show to watch a show at five o'clock because mm -hmm. most of them, you know, they have kids and they have jobs and they they have to provide. So are we mm -hmm. are we analyzing the full spectrum of it from mm -hmm. the public that's coming and from the artist that's presenting? Because if my public is between the age of 25 and 45 and you book me at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, there's a big chance that most of these people are still at work when I'm performing. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, I know I see it. And, and, and Cecile, uh, tu, tu es le seul uh, artiste uh, ici qui vit uh, à Montréal, en Québec. Et je veux juste parler un peu uh, si, tu, si pour toi, uh, um, il y a comme les différences entre comment les gens en, en Québec et en particulier en Montréal uh, et, 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 les, et comment les festivals en Montréal ils sont uh, produits vers comme les autres, les autres places que tu, as, que tu, uh, que tu uh, joues en Canada? Um, je vais être honnête, um, ça fait 20 ans que je fais carrière au Québec, mm. donc euh, musicienne. Ça fait dix ans que je suis ouais. artiste solo. J'ai okay. euh, l'un quatre albums, l'un de mes albums est francophone. Euh, J'ai mentionné mm. en introduction que mon projet euh, jouait en moyenne 100 à 150 spectacles par année. Right? Mm. Sur ouais. ces, mettons, 100, 100 spectacles. Sur 100 spectacles, mm. il y en avait peut-être même pas 5 que je jouais au Québec. Euh, Sérieux. Wow. Like, no word of a lie, most of my shows have been outside of Quebec. Mm -hmm. And um, did all the francophone showcases. Et, mm -hmm. tu sais, on t'applaudit, on te donne des standing on te dit, on adore ce que tu fais. Sauf que le public ne va pas sortir te voir parce que ton nom est trop exotique. Ça, c'est ce qu'on m'a sorti. <laughs> Right, and it wasn't for lack of wanting to present me or 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 the quality of the show or whatever. It's a concert. So ça c'était. Ça c'était um, quand j'ai sorti après que je sorte mon mon album francophone. Um, 
Donc ça, c'était 2000. Ah, mais mais c'est dans, dans les ans 2000 que, que tu es Oui, que sauf que dans les, ans, dans les années 2000. <rire> OK. Puis juste, juste, okay. juste pour con contextualiser, parce que euh, il y a aussi une différence entre juste être francophone et être... Euh, et, et, et la diversité dans le monde francophone aussi. Puis je vous avoue oui. que ma, ma, mon expérience en tant qu'artiste francophone, noir, et si on mm -hmm. ajoute à ça le paramètre queer en plus de ça, queer, oui, okay. n'est pas mm -hmm. positif du tout um, okay. de ce côté-là. So, um, je ne suis peut-être pas la bonne personne à qui poser cette question parce que je n'ai pas nécessairement de belles choses à dire. Montréal, c'est différent parce que Montréal, c'est l'une des, des, des villes les plus ouvertes qu'on va trouver, malgré ouais. pas mal de problèmes qu'on a quand même à régler. Mmh. Euh, y a, on a quand même eu de, de gros fiascos, euh, soyons ouais. côté festival et côté diversité, tout ça. Ouais. Sauf que euh, quand on regarde les Franco, quand on regarde le festival jazz, quand on regarde Nuit d'Afrique, quand on regarde les festivals euh, euh, présentés ici, il y a quand même une présence noire. Et il y a quand même, on peut quand même et, et, et se aussi, voir au niveau des musiques qu'on fait, ce qui n'est pas nécessairement mais, le cas mais, ailleurs. Et, et aussi, c'est simple en Montréal qu'il y a, un, il y a un, 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 une direction pour les festivals qui est, uh, qui est, uh, 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 qui est comme, um, comment est-ce qu'on dit ça? C'est, uh, it's about discovery. There are more festivals focused on discovery in Montreal, it seems. Yeah. Yeah, then, they're, they're... then there are, then there are, uh, you know, some of these more commercial festivals. Um, yeah. Am I wrong? Or, no, they're, or, they're... Like, you know, we talk about Nuit d'Afrique. Nuit d'Afrique, the Folk like, Fest you know, here, uh, Mutech. Um, Mutech, like a, a bunch of festivals that are about um, showing, not not just giving you the games, right? And and especially the ones that, that um, um, qu'est-ce que je veux dire? Um, mais je pense aussi que ça reflète le, le public qu'on a ici à Montréal. Because you can't really compare like the, the open society that, that we are here and the numbers that we have here and the diversity mm -hmm. to a place where mm -hmm. when you look in the mirror, that's the only other black face you're going to see for hundreds of clicks. Like, let, let's be honest. Like, so so right. um, I think we have an advantage here and, and it would be the same if you compared, I don't know, Toronto to, to, to say Crest in BC. You know, it's, it's right. there, there's a big difference in terms of the demographic that you're working with as well in terms of ha being able to, to feel comfortable presenting that and having that sustainable. So um, this but I think what you're talking... No, no, no. Sorry, no, please, don't please finish. So, so, so it's, 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 it's trying to find that balance, right? Because uh, in all fairness, but, but mind you, I say that, but then Quebec City and Montreal, you still see a difference despite them being two big cities, right? So, um, yeah. so they, there's part yeah, of the I mean, problem, I think, is figuring out how to help change the mentalities. You know, how is it that, that, you, that, that you get... Um, rather than, 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 than promoting the status quo, how do you actually right. promote or set up a stage right. to be able to, for, for the next generation to not hear your name is too funky for us to, 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 to you yeah. know, present no, you to our crowd. I, I think, you, I think you, made a, you made a great point there. And I, I, like, you know, how do you, inse like, you know, why, you know, why do we incentivize uh, uh, organizations that push the status quo? You know, why do we support organizations that push it? Or how is it that, why, you know, why are these organizations remaining successful? Why aren't we, you know, uh, uh, you know, supporting more organizations? Or why don't, or, or why aren't we incentivizing? Or how can we incentivize more of that risk taking? Uh, and I but, see hands up. I want to get at, I want to get at uh, Ian and then Yao. Yeah, so, so um, Yao said something and I want to dovetail off of what Cecile said as well. Um, I am probably the only one here who does not speak French. Um, but I think that talking about inclusion in this festival space, in all festival spaces, in, like requires a revisioning. Uh, Yao pointed at this, a revisioning of the way that we define things. So it's like, I did a, a cursory search of, um, because this is Folk Music Ontario, I did a, a thing of folk music artists and every single artist that came up in Google was white, right? And so it's like, 
but we know it's not just Tracy Chapman and and like you know what I mean like our history in folk music goes back to Harry Belafonte and you know uh, Paul mm-hmm. Robeson right so it's like redefining yeah and Bob Marley and it's not just Ben Harper out in these streets right so mm-hmm. it's like you know like redefining the way that you see the artists and I'm gonna jump I'm gonna l- jump and leave that and let y'all go. Um, I mean, you're, you're totally right. And, and, and that's what I, I was bringing forward as well as far as risk taking. And what, C- what Cecile just said resonates to my core because I always say as a black artist, the reason why I can do what I do today is because there are artists like Cecile that were in front of me and that were doing all the hard work to open the road for me to be able to do that. So I have to also push the boundaries and do the same for the artists that are coming behind me. And the joke is Quebec is, is and as a Francophone artist, you know, and we think Quebec has the mono, monopoly on Francophonie, but there are a bunch of Francophones across the country. And I always found interesting when I speak to Quebec artists where I'm like, doesn't matter how many shows I do in a year, I play on average four, four, four events in Montreal, in Quebec a year. And I never understood because it would always be the same. It would always be the Mondo Carnaval, Nuit d'Afrique, Balatou, where I'm already being specific. They're already putting me in a genre. They're, they're putting me in world music. I hate the world world music. In Africa, Rigodon is not world. Is that, what, is it world music? Like, am I going to call it world music? No, <laughs> no. It, it, it goes far and beyond that. So why is it that the minute I'm a Black artist, how often did I find myself going to festivals and they say, I'm going to do world music. And the public themselves at the end of the show come to me and say, oh, that's not what I was expecting. I'm like, yeah, what were you expecting? That I was going to come and play djembe half naked with, you know, some white paint on my chest. That's what you expected because they say, I'm going to do world yeah. music. And it's not so, so the th- mentality it's interesting. So- to change because I want to say this because Ceci said something that is important. In 2017, I had producers, festivals in Ontario, look at me straight in the eyes and tell me, we like what you do, but our public is not ready yet. And in my mind, I'm like, but what's your role? Your role is to, is to present. Exactly, your role is, okay, I was just about, this is what I, this is what I was about yes. to ask about, uh, is, is this, in terms of the role of, you know, the, the what, like, exactly, like, People their role is, is the role of the festival producer to get the public ready, or is it just right. to, to feed, the, what, feed the public what they think the public wants? Yes, and also, it's funny, because that same person who had a closer relationship with my manager at the time, went over to my manager, and when, my, when I said to my manager that she told me that, hey, you know, she likes what I do, but our public isn't ready, and he went pressing for question and pressing to get her yeah. to, you know, change her mind. What does that mean? She clearly said to him, she said, hey, listen, y'all does good stuff, but Blacks don't work in my community. That's literally what she said, and that's 2017. But at that and, moment, and, 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 and this is what I find interesting is that, like, you know, you have that, and then on the contrast, you have Cecile talking about the fact that when she tours all over Canada as a francophone artist, not in Quebec, all you know, all around other places, that people are really responding well and loving the music, and so, and and this is the same point that I was making about when we booked him do Mokhtar that. You know, these producers are saying, oh, I don't know, like, I don't know if this is really going to work, but we know that it works because Cecile's been out playing and she sees the response in the audience. I've been booking shows and I can see that there's a huge audience for this stuff that someone else might look at and say, oh, this is too risky. So again, the question is, like, you know, are, are, the, are the people who are in these positions, you know, connected enough? to the communities, to the, to the, to the, you know, to the communities of passionate music fans, listeners, uh, supporters, to be able to, uh, to be able to see, you know, some of the things that we, that are obvious to us. And maybe that's, maybe that's one of the big challenges uh, as far as, as far as that goes. What you're saying is so important because in the same story in 2017, between 2017 and 2019, there is an event in Ontario called the Les Jeux Franco-Ontariens. It's basically mm. like the Olympics for Francophone mm. high school students. There is music, mm. and sports, it's literally like the Olympics. And there's also one on a, na- mm. on a nation- nationwide scale. But that's a mm. thousand kids in an arena and they book a show. And I found myself being invited to perform that show. 
the youth organization in Ontario, while the programmers are telling me that my music won't work, the youth are inviting me to perform in an arena in front of thousands of kids. And two years later, I'm doing yeah. over 45 shows in remote areas, Hearst, Kapuskey, St. Timmins of Ontario, because ultimately it took the public to say, mm. well, it would work. And when Ian says, well, there's a reason why these festivals are also dying and they're having a hard time bringing the youth to come. Because if you're telling me that my stuff won't work with your public, but then the youth themselves that you're trying to get into your venue are inviting me to perform at their youth event in front of thousands of them. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, there's, someone, a, big there's a disconnect somewhere. There's a, there's disconnect a big somewhere. disconnect somewhere. And, 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 you know, I'm interested from city, you know, as somebody who is like a leader in music in, in, in Ottawa, and then also like, you know, as you said, is an art, is an artist who is pushing, uh, uh, but you know you've met your own share of adversity and and are now sort of uh, uh, um, um, yeah you've met your own share of adversity and overcome it but you're now putting yourself in a position you know in terms of working at CHUO working in radio to be actually making some of these decisions at least as it relates to broadcasting and I'm interested in your perspective on making that move from sort of being an artist who was looking for an opportunity to someone who you know is in a position to give people an opportunity to be heard and you know how you're thinking about how you're thinking about that role um I think what I've been doing I guess for the past couple of years is really putting my community onto uh, any, pretty much any achievements I get, I, I give the opportunity to my community first. Like for example, the announcement of me being a program director, the Ottawa Citizen wrote the article first, but I reached out to Shifter because uh, I knew it was going to be a big story in the city. So I reached out to, to Shifter, which is a community, which is a, a magazine that represents mm-hmm. our community. I'm like, hey, do, do an article and I'm gonna post your article. And that's what I've been doing is really like giving back to my computer, uh, community, taking time mm-hmm. to empower our community and showing them the game, showing, giving them the information like that we can all be at a place where we're able to mobilize and, and do what we wanna do. And uh, I think I'm, mm-hmm. I'm at that place where, cause, <sighs> Uh, at the end of the day, it's like hip hop is the number one genre, and like whether you're white, black, or whatnot, that's all these kids growing up. That's they want to be involved in that culture. So at the end of the day, we have access to that culture, and I'm just getting to a place now where it's like, hey, like if you want to be a part of this culture, then get back to get back to our community, speak to the actual people that have been putting in the work and the grassroots grassroot, uh, footwork in the community. And, and that's, I don't know, that's how I'm approaching everything. You know, that's a really, you know, I mean, I think that's a powerful perspective, to be honest, in terms of, in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of being in a leadership position and, and thinking about what that means uh, and, 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 and what it should mean. Ian, I see your hand up. Yeah, I'd, I'd like I'd love to dovetail off of what City's saying because one of the things that um, you know, like this PDRB, the breaking down racial barriers thing, is going to talk about in the report that's forthcoming is is um, is the importance of representation. So with City being at the radio station, he creates a conduit for a community to come in, right? And and so I think like getting back to the point that I was making in the beginning about re envisioning your festival from a different lens. Like you could use a stupid, you could use lens literally as a stupid analogy, right? If you change the photographers that are coming to your the, to your festival, the people who are taking the pictures, this changes the the perspective. Like it makes your festival be able to be seen from an all from a non white perspective. And both your marketing materials and your social media and your photo galleries, this is what is going to ultimately result in people feeling that they belong there. This is one to what is going to change the perspective um, in diversifying the, the, the artists that feel that they're welcome there. You know, like it's going to, it's going to change a lot and it's going to tell you a lot. It's going to give you a lot of information because if you look at the audience and you see that there's no black people in the audience, then you will know that there's an issue in terms of your diversity. If you look at your stage and you look at your stage setup, you will, that, that stage setup creates the, the range of experience for the audience 
to know that that they should come to your festival, right? So there's a financial thing that's involved. And, and back to the point that City and Yao were making about, and yourself, can't, when they, about taking chances. If you're close to the culture, then you realize the financial gain that you can yeah. get. If you're paying attention, you know that Africa is a continent. It's not a country, eh? Of course. That has of course. all of this diversity and all of this, like, and, and, Af and, and the reason that our institutions in Canada will always be behind the eight ball is because in the absence of us being able to access it at your festival, we're going to import it. We're going to export mm -hmm. it. We're going to go to their festival in their country and you're going to lose that income. And then you're not building an infrastructure for those artists to be here. And ultimately, when, yep. they, when they get where they're going, they're going to turn around and tell you to F off because you were not a part of the process by which they made it. This is why you have a brain drain in Canada, right? So like, I don't want to monopolize the conversation. I want to leave that to the artists. Like, but you know, that's the problem here. You're always 10 years behind because you're going to call me in 10 years and ask me what Afrobeat is. Because mm -hmm. it's a right. problem. It's a fundamental problem. So, it, and, and, and it reaches far beyond. You have to go back to the structure all the way at the beginning. Oakham's razor, cut right to the core and think about the diversity in your lineups people are like yeah you know what we're just going to put on a black artist racism solved no you have it has to go beyond putting on a one two axe you know and, and i would and i would suggest that it's not even and, and beyond your lineups it's about your decision making yes. structure yes it's yes. about your front office it's about your board yes. of directors it's about all of those things and sort of you know where the presence is because you know that's that's where uh that's where you know things are going to get spotted and uh you know and you can and you can address these uh you can address these things before they become something else uh i'm gonna i'm gonna give you out the last word here i think because his hand's been out and we are at 11 o'clock what 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 ian is saying is so important and from a personal perspective i always say you know, I've, I've lived those experiences when I talk to artists in Quebec and um, I keep bump and they're like, why you keep bumping your head on the Quebec scene? You know, you're doing things that we wish we're doing. You're performing all over the world. We wish we could do that. And I keep telling them, but it doesn't matter if at home I can't perform in mm. the only Francophone province that's here in the mm. country. And one of the things that I keep saying in terms of perspective when to reach Ian with the lenses is from an artist perspective, but also from a festival perspective, what we're trying to do is we're trying to reach the popular mass. We're trying to reach what we call the collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. what creates the collective is the individual. It's the sum of all of our individualities that creates the collective. So you have to be connected to the individuals if you want to reach the general mass. That's my perspective mm. on it when I write music. And it's also my perspective from a festival standpoint where I say, if you're not reflecting the individuals that are within your community on your stage, then you're not going to have that diversity either coming through the door and willing yeah, to pay the ticket to come because they don't see themselves. They don't recognize themselves on stage, right? You can bring one major artist and that one night is going to work because it's a mainstream artist and people are going to show up. But then the rest of your festival, you're going to be scrambling and the doors are empty and the stands are, are, are scrambling as well. So you have to have that connection. It's a must. So, I mean, to summarize, I mean, we talked a lot about sort of what you just, you know, what you just talked about, having that connection to the communities. And I think that by having that connection to communities, what seems like a risk to a festival will not seem like as much of a risk because they'll understand, uh, you know, what the real appetite, you know, at the grassroots level and in the, at the community level is uh, for this music that we're trying to present. You know, at the same time, we talked about the fact that, you know, in the Francophone community, um, you know, particularly as a Black artist in the Francophone community, there seem to be less opportunities than there are other places for this music. And, you know, and, and the fact that, that that's really challenging because we know how much, uh, you know, how influential Black music is in Quebec and everywhere else. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's challenging to see that at home, there are challenges finding perform you know finding opportunities to perform as a black artist at a festival and that seems to be true both in the francophone community and even here in ottawa 
based on some of the city's experiences. And so, you know, what this means, you know, ultimately is that, you know, festival programmers or those who are engaged in festival programming need to find ways to actually bring members uh, from the communities that they want to engage with into their decision-making structure and onto their stages. And, 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 and I'm not sure exactly in what order, but certainly uh, one than the other, because, uh, because yeah, that's the way that you're gonna be able to actually authenticate what you're doing and, and, and detokenize it. Um, I, wa I, wa I wanted to on say, that note, we're at I wanted to say one last thing that I think is very, very important on this. I know that we're over time, um, but I wanna, yeah. I wanna point at Cecile and I want everybody watching to, uh, to listen to what I'm carefully, to what I'm saying. When black women enter spaces, they open the door for everybody else to, uh, to enter spaces. If you wanna diversify your festivals, look at this because this will lead to Asian artists coming into the market. This will lead to indigenous artists coming into the market. Look at that thing. But, and the mo more important thing that I wanted to say is like, more importantly than the inclusion conversation about artists in the, in the festivals is the game plan by which you mean to do something about it after the fact. These panel discussions are great. When we're finished listening and learning what happens next, right? They have to come with some sort of action plan or else it's like, I watched that thing and I learned so much and then nothing changes, right? So look at the way that you market, look at your images, look at the people that you feature in your media, look at the people on your boards, look at the way you treat your artists. Look, how many people do you have in your organization? All of these things are important, but you have to make a plan to go behind that. Sorry, Gwen, they had to yeah, so. develop a strategy oh, and is important. One, and, and, and also, sorry, one, 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 one little thing too is, is also, um, I think there's something to be said about about educating all levels of the organization, um, all the way down to the volunteers and vetting also um, people's um, personal um, opinions or whatever else, because that that that's it starts there too, right? Like us feeling safe in a space, it starts with the people that greet us, all the way to the people who hire us. So, and, and audiences also take their cues from you, right? So it, I think it's very important um, to be aware of whom you're putting in your organization and how they are representing your organization and including the people that you wanna to try to include. Because without yeah. that, um, it's, it's an empty exercise, you know, and having been, excuse me, been on the receiving end of, of of that as an artist, even if my face was in the, on a poster in front of the person um, I was interacting with, um, it needs to get fixed because we are in 2021. <laughs> no, I, I, I appreciate that. No, so, Cecile, thank you for that. Thank you for that comment. And it's real. That's why I asked you when you, that's why I asked you when you made the comment, I said, in what year? I couldn't believe it, but. Well, you know, some, some is, has been more problem. recent than that. So yeah, so that's why. Yeah. Well, I mean, I want to say, and I'll just say one last thing myself, you know, particularly what, as it relates to Factor and some of the work that we're doing with, with the respect to diversity and inclusion, you know, one of the things that we've been focusing on, particularly with the collective initiatives and sponsorship grants, has to do with ensuring that the organizations do have diversity and inclusion strategies that they're actually putting into action. It's not just something on paper. Uh, and we think that's important. And I think that's really important uh, for, for any organization. Like Ian said, develop a plan, you know, figure out, figure out what you're actually going to do, uh, an action, and, and not, not, you know, an action plan, not just a plan, uh, one that's focused on actions and what it is that you're going to do to, uh, to make those changes uh, at the structural level and, you know, right down to the programming level. On that note, uh, I think we're going to say peace. Uh, I want to thank everybody who was on the panel. Merci à tous et tous, Cécile, Yao, Ian, City. Um, I don't think I forgot everybody, anybody, thanks, thanks did I? Thank you for, for moderating this panel, and thanks to Folk Music yes. Ontario for inviting us to do this. Yes, thank, thank you to Folk Music thank Ontario. You, Folk Music, thank you, Quende. And I'm so grateful to meet all of you incredible artists. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, man. Stay safe out there. Huh? Thanks.